verifying trig identities. Okay, so the nice thing about 5.2 is it's really not much different than 5.1. The, the difference is that uh, you're going to know what it's equal to. And you just have to say, it is true that this is actually equal to that. Okay, so you're still using the same trig identities, but you already you get to know what the answer is. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> exactly. This is so hard. You have this to prove it. It is hard. I like math. This is just pushing me to the edge. That's not funny, too. Sign squared. In this case, the answer is 1 minus 2 sines squared. Okay, so, <laughs> so here, here is your goal, okay? The first thing that you have to do is you have to pick one of the sides. So we are not solving an equation, okay? There is an equal sign, but what we are doing is we are proving that one side is equivalent to the other side by using the trig identities that we just did, okay? So I have to say, I'm going to choose my left-hand side. I'm going to manipulate it until it becomes exactly what the right-hand side looks like. Okay, so would you like to manipulate the left-hand side or would you like to manipulate the right-hand side? Okay, now I will tell you, when you are trying to make a decision about which one to choose, you always wanna choose the one that has more stuff. It is easier to manipulate stuff than to create stuff, okay? So since the left-hand side has two different trig identities, two trigs, that's the side I would choose. Do you have to choose that side? You don't have to, okay? But that's the side I would choose. Okay, so who's got an idea for this? Everybody have their trig um, identities out somewhere? Okay, so you should be looking at that. I have mine somewhere. There we go. I'm ready. Okay, so who's got a thought for manipulating the left-hand side? Okay, now, you cannot add to the other side. You cannot touch the other side. So if I'm going to say I'm going to manipulate the left-hand side, this is like so unalgebraic. You guys so want to manipulate the other side. You can't touch the other side. You can only touch the left-hand side. So pretend that you don't know the other side. How can I manipulate cosine squared and sine squared? Add sine squared on both sides. Okay, let me re-say yeah. that one more time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why can't I do the same thing with both sides? No touching the other side. <laughs> Cannot touch it. We are proving that one side is equivalent to the other side. Mind blown. Okay, okay. there you go. Oh, so, so Pythagorean theorem, right? So, can we say that cosine squared is equal to, okay, good, there you go. Okay, so here's my little thought process. I'm looking at this, my identity sheet, and I see this one that says sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, and I'm thinking, I'm going to replace this cosine squared. So, if I take my identity, my Pythagorean identity, and replace it with the cosine, cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared, okay? So, that's what I'm going to replace it. I'm going to take this piece and plug it into my cosine, okay? So, I'm going to have 1 minus sine squared, and then I have this minus sine squared that was already there. Okay, remember I can't touch the other side, but I'm still throw down the equal sign because that's what it's equivalent to. Okay, now what can I do? Kind of. How about like combine like terms? So if I have a minus sine squared minus another sine squared, how many sine squareds do I have? Negative two. So I have one minus two sine squared, and voila! Both sides are equivalent. So at the very end of your proof, you get to throw down this awesome check mark. That means, yes, in fact, these two phrases are equivalent. So I did it my way. I added the sine across. And I got cosine, cosine squared. Okay, but you can't touch the other side. That's just how that's how a proof is. You can't touch the other side. You guys remember doing geometry and doing proofs? I know you guys don't. You guys all blocked it out because it was so horrible. 
you can't touch the other side. That's that's like the idea of a proof. We're not solving an equation. We're we're proving the two sides are equivalent. Okay, let's do another one. All right, so this time we're going to be given the cotangent squared over cosecant. And that is going to be equivalent to cosecant minus the sine. Okay, so now step one, I have to choose which side I'm going to manipulate. Which side would you like to manipulate? Yeah, they're about the same. What's that? Okay, so Mari's feeling cotangent squared. She likes the Pythagorean identity. We're going to go left side because Mari said so. No, I think it's a good way. Okay, so what is, what is cotangent squared equal to according to our uh, Pythagorean identity? Pythagorean identity. Good. Okay. Did you guys say cosecant squared minus one? Okay, good. Oh, make sure you say minus one though. Okay, over cosecant. Okay. Now what can I do? Okay. You cannot cancel them now out yet because you have a minus one on the top. But what we could do is separate them into two fractions. Do you see how you can separate that? Okay. So I can have a cosecant squared over the cosecant minus the one over the cosecant. Okay. So now I have two fractions. What can I do on the first fraction? That can be changed to one cosecant, right? Cosecant. And what is one minus co or one over the cosecant the same as? Sine. Did I get there? See the other side? Boom. Check mark. Those two sides are equivalent. I always feel really bad to touch, to shut the door, but I feel like it's really disruptive. Am I the only one that thinks that? <laughs> Eddie, if you would mind shutting the door, maybe they can just leave it out there. Thank you. Sorry, I feel like that's rude, but... <laughs> okay, number three. All right, so number three, decision number one, should we manipulate the left side or the right side? What? Oh, you guys are both said left. Okay. Going with left. So what can you use on the left-hand side? Okay, so tangent squared. So what is tangent squared equivalent to? Good. A secant squared minus one. Is everybody okay with where we're coming up with these? Because if you don't understand that, you need to be asking. Because that's the hard part of this. Okay. Now what can I do? Yeah. Add your like terms, right? And we're there. Plus three. Boom. Good there. That one was pretty easy, right? Okay, one more. This is my last example. Okay, so this one feels very much like what we were just doing in my in my mind. Okay, so which side would you manipulate? The left. Yeah, definitely the left one on this one. Okay, uh, where would you go with this one? Who's got a thought? Okay. 
Change the tangent. I like that idea. Let's start with just changing the tangent. So what is tangent? Sine over cosine. Good. So I could squeeze that really quick and say that we have cosine of x plus sine squared over cosine. Okay. Now what do you see? What should we do next? We are adding fractions. Okay, so remember that this is the same as cosine over 1. So what's my common denominator? Cosine. Good. So I'm going to multiply this one by cosine over cosine. Okay. So is it okay if I squeeze at the same time here? Squeeze my tops and just leave it over cosine? So I'm going to have cosine squared plus sine squared all over cosine. Everybody follow that step? Okay. Ooh, something jumps out to me. Anybody else? Canceling. Ooh, no, 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 canceling. There you go. The top is cosine squared plus sine squared. That's a Pythagorean identity. That's equivalent to 1. Oh, and 1 over cosine is there you go. What, Mari? Is it just like in this problem? Why no canceling? If you if you cancel out um, a cosine, you have to do it out of every term. You cannot cancel when there's adding and subtracting on the top or on the bottom. It's a very common mistake. So like if there was right, you could. The only way you could cancel cosine on this step is if there was a cosine with this sign. Yeah, I realize that now that there's a Okay, but yeah. it's like, it's used that. Oh, okay. It's not just normal. So no, that's true. That's true always. No, like, if you don't know if that was not, if that was being like this. Then you could. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so am I good? Should I keep going? You ready to play with this a little bit yourself? I guess. You might need to that's all right. That's what I'm here for. Uh, let me take a quick look at the assignment. Make sure that I have the right numbers. I do know it's on page 324. Okay, so I'm going to give you uh, 2 through 30 even. 